since I'm in the new office at this studio, I thought I would give a video of my favorite political movies because this is a political time. And a lot of people think this is a very divided time in our nation. This is not the most divided time in our nation. Remember, we had a war of civil. That's right. We had people warring over civilware. And if you don't believe that, just look in your history books. You can probably Google up and find that we had a war over civil war. So with that being said, this is not the most divided time in our nation. And also saying that there have been lots of political films in our history. Now, I'm going to have to say and give you a warning, I have not put the Manchurian candidate on this list and the only reason is I've never seen the Frank Sinatra version or the Denzel Washington version of the Manchurian candidate. So it does not mean that this is a bad list. It means it's not as great as some lists you will see on the internet. I mean, these people have watched more movies than I have. But I'm going to start with a few favorite of mine. I consider, well, not just that they're favorite, they're easy to watch. I would say I would you know, recommend them. There's more than just 10, and they're more than just listening to what other people think. The Dead Zone, which is a Stephen King book and also a movie starring Christopher Walken, a man who is trying to assassinate the president. But the it goes into the questioning, well, what if the president was really, really bad and you have to assassinate him? I mean, what if the president, I don't know, was like a bad movie producer and he was going to make, say, Police Academy 8? Would you not be justified in killing him? Of course you would. And this guy had powers and he could see the future and see that this guy was going to do some really bad things. Should it be all right for them to assassinate a president who's going to do some bad things? Another one is Enemy of the State. Have you ever seen the movie Conversation with Gene Hackman? Well, this is like the conversation for the 90s, and it stars Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman also did the conversation, which is another one that I really like, and I love looking at the old tech gear of trying to hear a conversation. Uh, one of the early actresses in this is Cindy Williams, who is in the conversation. So that's pretty interesting. I also put Blue Thunder in there. A lot of people think, well, that's just a dumb helicopter movie. But it's basically uh, happened around 1984, and that's the reason why the film, who wrote the, Dan O'Bannon, who wrote the, you know, script for it, thought, well, you know, you know, what if the police had too much power? And nowadays, when we look at a police car with all these uh, technology in there, you know, just for being late for a library card, we don't even think twice about it. Blue Thunder brings in that question of should, you know, police cars have computers that pull up your past? I mean, basically, should a guy be arrested for something he did 20 or 30 years ago? This was a time when there was a lot of uneasy uh, race relations in LA was just starting to hype up and then we'd see more of that through the Rodney King trials. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and join the crew by subbing and clicking the bell. Robocop is a obviously a political satire, especially goes after Americans and their quote unquote fetish for violence. Uh, you know, why is America violent? Maybe it's because of what they're watching television or... I, my address is always we got more people than most of the countries in the world. And that's one of the reasons. So, like, if you had a hundred people in a room and eight of those hundred people would die, in America, imagine that number being 800 for 800,000 people in a room. That's what you're dealing with America is there's a lot more people in America than most of the countries. So to compare the violence in America to a country that can that has barely a million people in it is very, very misleading. So uh, to say America is violent, but at the hands of what? We'd rather have violence than no freedom. 13 Days, the biographical look at the 
time when Kennedy and the missile, Cuban Missile Crisis. A very good little movie, of course. Kennedy is the good guys in the autobiography. So just take that in mind. <laughs> if you're not a Kennedy fan, you're probably not gonna like that film. The Man Who Knew Too Much. I love this film. This is a Hitchcock suspense that starts out throwing everything out there from family to patriotism in a film and because you really like the character and it's hard to even turn away and it's got a long run time but it goes by pretty fast all the presidents man a lot of people might argue that there's a lot of change in history and that we're learning more truth and truth about the watergate scandal so this might not stand up to the test of time but it is interesting. I do like one part where the editor requires the two young journalists to have at least two sources before he would print the story. It's something to think about that when you go out there and you put your story on the line, can you back up what you put out there? For Vendetta, I love this film. Uh, and I'm not, I'm gonna be a little biased. I am American, so it's easy for me to like this film. I'm not a British person, so I would like to know a British perspective on V for Vendetta and what they think, uh, because mostly of what I get from Alan's view of America, I disagree with because it, he doesn't really understand the American culture and he is British, so I hopefully this is, uh, you know, accurate to the British culture. Even Vendetta is a is a fun movie, uh, you know. Blah, 1981, uh, based on the Ted Kennedy scandal. As many of us know, Ted Kennedy was in an accident, which involved the death of a, a, a young lady. Uh, the cover up regarding that, and many people think it is the Democratic version of the Republican Watergate. Network. I like Network. Again, we're talking about the influence of the news and on the politics. I say again, it's probably one of the first movies that kind of dived into the nightly news. At this time, you were looking at the popularity of Morley Safer and Walter Conkright, and all these people were becoming very popular in the days of the news. And I think Network kind of addresses that to making the nightly news a more religious cult-like. Who's your daddy? 